what Martin once described it as a, as a knife fight in a phone booth, and, and, and I think that that's a really apt description of how, how he, his action feels. And it's, uh, uh, it's rough, it's dirty, it's fast, and, and you know, you got to be ready for it. So it's been fun to train in that regard to, for something actually real. Yeah. Um, did you have to do any special physical training to place the girls' love <laughs> I had to spend many days with Ryan. That was uh, that was my training. No, I um, <laughs> I, uh, I I got to be in the Matrix rig, which was really cool. It was this rig that was invented for the Matrix, and I think it goes about twenty feet high, but I like to say fifty. So please spread that rumor because it makes me feel cooler. But um, you know, I'm on this like gyroscopic waist belt, and it and it works towards your weight and. Um, it makes you very nauseous and you can just spin in every which direction. Um, but that was about the extent of my stunts for this. But we also did some, um, some uh, test pilot training too, which was really fun. And how do you describe the style of your character in fashion? Uh, you know, Nyla was very specific to make her um, relevant but not too modern. You know, she, you, you didn't want to connect the movie to any specific time because um, you don't want to date it. Um, so it was just very classic column dresses, which is like an iconic, strong businesswoman look. <laughs> My wife indeed dated Batman. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess it was my turn. <laughs> Although I, I don't get much kissing, I <laughs> might get a kiss. Man. Uh, he's a uh, he's a biologist. He studies. Um, he teaches at the university, but he's you know in his private time is quite interested in extremophiles. You know, animals that live in extreme environments on Earth as a way to understand creatures that live on another planet. And um, you know, there's a fine line there between science and wishful thinking. And uh, I, you know, I thought about a lot of people who have sort of stretched our ideas, you know, can you add a little bit of creativity to science, say, like, you know, Carl Sagan or Isaac Asimov and people like that. And the part of me that when I was young, I read more things like that, I would say, than I did straight comics. And, um, you know, a sense of wonder about the world where you start filling in gaps, you know, which is what most scientists try not to do, you know. So I really thought of him as kind of a dreamer in a lot of ways. Hi, I have a question for um, Ryan and Martin. I'm really curious to hear about the casting process because I think Ryan has been pointed out to you, I'm sure many times before, you're like kind of making, you know, uh, superhero movie history by sort of like being in the Marvel Universe and DC Universe, the major character. So um, tell us a little bit about what, in, what went into that, you know, because maybe some agents or actors would have shied away from that thinking there might be a conflict of interest. And, and also if you can talk about, you know, um, you know, any speculation that there may be, you know, sort of a Justice League of America. Yes. Uh, Sorry. Maybe. <laughs> Get him. Someone's cell phone goes off on our set, you're dead. And also, <laughs> and also, if you want to touch on the fact that you know, there's so, there's always this intrigue and secrecy over who's going to be cast as what, and just I'd like to hear just like you know about the yeah. casting process and how that works. For you. Well, I, you know, I, I don't personally delineate too much between Marvel and DC and kind of pay any you know heed to that you know supposed rivalry or yeah, I, I just. We, you know, we live in a world in which the technology, I think, has allowed us to bring a lot of these kinds of movies to life in ways that they couldn't even two years ago or three years ago. And, um, and so I think the emergence of the superhero franchise being sort of more mainstream now, I think, is a result of that and, not, and nothing really more. But um, I, I don't, you know, I, I've never really had that thought or issue about, you know, I was, in, I was in a Marvel film so I can't be in a DC film. And the casting process for me was, was, was the same as it would have been for anyone else. I, I met with Martin, I fell in love with the concept, the idea, he showed me the art department, which was an incredible, it, it was an experience, I didn't go to the art department and see a few things, I had an experience there, I mean to see the world that they were creating for this, for this character and for this film was unlike anything I'd ever seen uh, captured on film, uh, ever, and, and, and that was an amazing moment for me, so that's what really made me want to do it, and then I screen tested, not once, but twice, uh, I got up there and, and uh, you know, Martin put me through the paces, but the great thing about a screen test is it's just another day at work. 
you know, you're, you're, you're there on set, you know, you're, there's a, another actor with you, and there's a set, and there's a cameraman, and you just do, you know, you just go to work. And uh, so it was actually kind of a nice, pleasant experience. And what was the turning point for you, Martin, when you knew that Ryan was the one? Well, we did go through, I mean, we did <coughs> test a few actors, and it was, um, we, uh, we tested a few of them twice, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. we went to England and tested a, a, a couple of people, right? Um, but, but really, and, and, and it's a very serious consideration because it's not just one film. If it is successful, then I'm sure they'll want to do a sequel. So this is something that goes on for a long period of time. And, um, and that's what tests are all about, is looking at them and saying, well, who, is, who comes up best? Everyone was good. Ryan was exceptional. And uh, the agreement was with everybody, Warner Brothers and Donald, myself, and, that Ryan was perfect for the part. So the process is pretty standard in terms of films like this with so much riding on um, <coughs> and uh, a potential franchise. And so uh, that, that's how we arrived at that. One other little funny anecdote is that Martin and I had never done a superhero movie, but we found out that they always want to see the guy in the mask. That's part of the test. Yeah, and Ryan looks really good in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a bit of a. I actually have one little anecdote to add to this that I haven't mentioned yet. But it was there was a Cinderella element to it because the the effects house that was building the mask, they have these things we we have in our industry called life casts, and you do that on your on your head, and it's a mold of of an actor's head, and then you can build a prosthetic around that. Um, you could do anything. I mean, obviously Peter had one done to, to do wear his prosthetics in the film. But uh, the, the effects house that was, was asked to make the Green Lantern mask uh, had no idea who was auditioning, but they arbitrarily chose my head from their vast <laughs> catalog of actors' heads with which to build this mask around. So when I showed up to set, my mask fit a little bit better than maybe Regis Philbin's or Richard Chamberlain's or whoever else was uh, auditioning that day. <laughs> So repeat the question. What scares me? Oh, well, well, sure. I mean, you know, stepping out at uh, Comic Con in front of sixty-five hundred people is not a not a settling experience. Um, uh, you know that, that that. But I think you know, in terms of, of fear, I try not to live in in fear. I mean, nerves are a nice thing. You know, they let you know you're alive. So I pay atten more attention to the nerves than I do the fear. It's all about will. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't want to talk about what scares me. Good call. You guys talked a lot about the aliens in space on the movie. I'm just curious, because the aliens are all CG based, have you guys done casting those parts? Who might be voicing those parts? Yeah, it's interesting. We've got some ideas, we, <coughs> which we can't disclose at the moment. But, but that, well, because of post-production, you know, they, 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 <coughs> we're a year out from releasing, and uh, and also the look of the characters. And, and again, it will be. I'm sure there'll be three or four voices tried for, for each character to see how they fit. You're never quite sure until you've cut the film as to precisely how the characters turned out, and uh, rather like. Um, screen tests for actors, um, uh, one does the same for voices to see which voice suits them on. My question is for Mark. You played villains in Sherlock Holmes, Aiden, and Amazing Gathering, and Aiden, 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 I'm not sure you, you prepare for villains necessarily. You, you prepare for a character, you know. And uh, I suppose the way I look at villains is that they're not nobody's born evil. There's usually something that happens in their, their uh, time on the planet or wherever or in space that causes them to become the way they are. So uh, with Sinestro, basically, you have to look at who he is and what he stands for and what he believes in, essentially. And uh, he is an incredibly uh, organised, uh, fearless. Uh, exponent of the Green Lantern Corps who believes that he knows best and um, in this movie and as it stands he becomes mentor to the newly minted uh, human uh, Green Lantern 
and basically guides him through his first steps. And uh, we deal with really that, that process. So I don't, I don't think of him as a villain or, or, or even in a, in a bad sense. He's just an incredibly powerful presence who uh, knows what, is, what he believes uh, and what he wants to be right. And if there's anything that causes him later on to spill over to the dark side, it's probably his, his unquestioning belief in, in his own rightness. Yeah? Okay. Uh, interesting. I mean, uh, going to work uh, uh, beating up a 12 year old girl wasn't an experience that I had <laughs> very often. So it's nice to be facing, you know, a, a worthy opponent. <laughs> Take that as a cop. Yeah, we've been, uh, since I've been here, we've been uh, training. We, we, uh, part of the, the storyline is that, uh, you know, Hal needs to, to visit Oa and meet the other Green Lanterns. And basically, Sinestro tests him because he's not entirely sure that a human is uh, worthy of being at the core. So there are a sequence where um, uh, Kilowog and uh, Sinestro and Tom Array put him through his paces. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that what you mean is that, that like, are you, are you referring to, to all the other Justice League characters, or these, do these affect, do the, yeah, do the other characters, like the Justice League characters, the Flash, Batman, Superman, yeah. do they affect Green Lantern? No, yeah. I, no, I don't think so at all. No, I think we stand, uh, we stand absolutely on our own, yeah. and uh, we stand as, uh, as our own, uh, as our own superhero, our own story, and uh, a terrific story it is. Artful deflection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I don't. I also would never profess to know or be as versed and literate in that comic book world as they are necessarily. Um, I, I do know a bit about comic books and certain ones, and other ones I know nothing about. So uh, I'll be the first to tell them if I don't know anything about, you know, that particular issue, which is likely. <laughs> Grab some pictures of Blake, real quick. Thank you. Where'd you go? <laughs>